If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrelf, here with my very first prize deck tech. Can you tell I'm proud of my format? <laughs> Just a lot. And this is an archetype that as far as I'm aware is completely unique to prize. It is a Captain Sisse deck. We'll get to her in just a moment, but we're going to start off with, very simply, we have a ramp package. We have a Green Sun Zenith. This one will let us get any green creature out of our deck. It's good enough that it's banned in modern. Although, I don't think it would be banned if it weren't for you, Dryad Arbor, but we'll get to you. Actually, we'll skip ahead to you. That's fine. Skip ahead. So, it is a zero mana green creature. <laughs> Zero mana because it's a land, so at, at zero, say on turn one, we go get a Dried Arbor and it effectively ramps us. Uh, with another mana, we can get a Finhorn Elf, etc. You get the idea. Speaking of, here's good old Finhorn Elves. It's your Elvish Mystic, it's your Lanoir Elves. This one got printed in from the Vault 20, and so we get to play it here. Sounds good enough to me. Now, this is sort of a combo deck, and as such we want a, uh, a card draw spell. This one also stalls the game for us for a little bit. It's Wall of Blossoms. Very simply, enters the battlefield, draw a card. And it's an 0-4, so survives Chain Lightning and blocks for a decent while. Alright. Lastly, we have three copies of Jace Vryn's Prodigy. Good old VP here. Serves as another win condition and another way to find your combo pieces early in the game. Alright, so now that we have all of that out of the way, Captain Sisse. Search your library for a legend, well, legend or legendary card. So, legendary card, period. Does it have to be a creature? It can be a few others, and we have legendary artifacts. We have, well, planeswalkers now. Planeswalkers, by the way, have been errated to all be legendary. So, Captain Sisse can even go and get, um, say, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Garuk Relentless. We have a little legendary package here. Uh, but what we care about for the purpose of this being a combo deck is that we have a single copy of Paradox Engine. Whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. So one of the ways that this deck tries to go off is Captain Sisse will get something, you'll cast it, it untaps Captain Sisse, tap it again, you'll get something, so on and so forth, and you can keep doing this. Basically, it's the value Sisse. So get a lot of cards in your hand, play a lot of spells, but there's also a combo in here. Uh, you'll notice, I, I am skipping ahead just a little bit, but you'll notice that there's an Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. And if you're thinking, well, wait a minute, where's the mana ramp? All I'm seeing are Finhorn Elves, and we have a few mana rocks here. Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, Soul Ring. Okay, so what happens here is Captain Sisse will untap, but so will your mana dorks, your mana rocks. Uh, Dryad Arbor won't, but these will, and you'll get to make additional mana. And if you keep casting cheaper spells than the mana you're making, let's say you have, just to make it easy, Finhorn Elf and Soul Ring, you could play one or two mana spells and you'll still net mana. Well, that's basically what's going on here. You're trying to net mana, net mana, until you can get Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. Or, if you're not going to be able to make enough mana in one turn, you go and get Omnith to store your green mana and save it up for Ulamog later on. So that's essentially the combo here. Uh, However, we don't have to just win off of Ulamog, as you can imagine. Uh, we also have two Jace the Mind Sculptor, better than all. Shout out to Patrick Chapin. Uh, yeah, just, it, it, do I really need to explain that one? All the better now that we can actually tutor it up. When you get late enough in the game and you have a Captain Sisse, you can get a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Seems awesome. Uh, also, there's a Garuk Relentless, a single copy. Whereas Jace protects you by unsummoning creatures, Garuk can either fight to transform or just make a 2 2, or make a jump blocker. And that can get you by for quite a while. Alright, so now that we've gone over this top row, let's look at our utility creatures here. We actually have them in reverse order by curve. We're going to start off with Micaeus the Lunark. This is the most common one on a combo turn. I can cast Micaeus for zero, doesn't even have to come in, doesn't even have to have any counters, and it just untaps my mana rocks if I happen to have enough. Alternatively, this could even be part of a value Sisse, where it comes in and you get to tap it and untap it, tap it and untap it repeatedly uh, with Paradox Engine. 
So that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, next we have Jinara Asher of War, which was uh, admittedly one of the first cards I ever actually owned. Uh, when I started playing. So I'm a little biased towards Jannara. Glad to see her around. This is, if we're not going on a combo plan, if we're just going on a fair game plan, well, lo and behold, you dump a bunch of mana into Jannara, and you have at least a 3-3 flyer, plus a good bit more than that. Uh, also, bear in mind that there's no lightning bolt in the format. There is a chain lightning, but that's a sorcery, and so if you have 5 mana, you can get Jannara out of lightning range. Uh, I already mentioned what Omnith could be used for on a combo turn, but otherwise, if you just have a ton of green mana, this is a way to make the biggest creature. Uh, the biggest creature. Next we have Rafik the Mini, who's also important for the fair, mid-range style game plan. Rafik of the Mini plus Jannara Asher of War is a little bit of a combo. Exalted, and whenever a creature you control attacks alone, it gains double strike till end of turn. Now, if there's a permanent that we have a hard time dealing with, or even a spell that we really don't want to resolve, we have Vincer's Shaper Savant, and it has Flash, so we could even do this on our opponent's turn. Tap Sisse to get Vincer out, cast Vincer, and return that spell or permanent. Gets it out of the way for a bit. Soon Quan, Lord of Wu. Shoutouts to Portal Three Kingdoms. Creatures you control have horsemanship. So eventually you'll get to a point where if you're playing against an aggro deck or just any sort of creature deck that's clogged the board, you cast Sun Quan, and lo and behold, now your creatures can swing through. And then lastly, Ulamog, who is certainly not necessary to the deck, but is <laughs> pretty good, I'd say. If you don't want to go on this particular combo, there is another one you can use. I've considered running Gisela and Bruna, which turn into Brisella. Uh, that's another you can do, it, taking out probably Ulamog and Omnith uh, for those two. They're both legendary and can be tutored up with Captain Sisse. So maybe that's worth considering as well. I'm not entirely sure which one would be better. This is the only one that I've actually tried out. Uh, but guess what I'm going to be trying next? Uh, <laughs> angel tutoring. Alright, so after I've set these out, we have some interactive pieces. Of <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Of course, we have swords to plowshares, just to deal with opposing creatures. That makes sense. We're a white deck in this format. We're going to be running four swords. Shoutouts to Legend of Zelda Four Swords. Uh, next, we have Lightning Greaves, which does double duty on Captain Sasse. It gives her haste so that she can start tutoring right away, and gives her shrouds so that the opponent can't deal with her. Th for the same reason you see this all the time in EDH, basically every EDH deck, you would see it here. I'm not sure about having just one copy, but I'm not sure what to take out, and a lot of these choices you'll notice are experimental. For example, here's a one of Umazawa's Jite, which is legendary, so I can afford having it just at one. It just allows us to beat other creature decks. It allows us to beat go-wide decks, makes our creatures bigger in response to what would deal damage, it just, you know, it's great. <laughs> There's a reason this thing is crazy good and banned in modern. Alright, now, speaking of dealing with creatures, we have a single copy of Opposition. So tap an untapped creature we control, tar tap target artifact, creature, or land. We can get to a stage later in the game where we use our creatures to tap down their lands, and we can just do this over and over and over and over again. As you can see, we can amass a fair number of creatures, and this lets us use cards like Wall of Blossom for, for something, anything. Alright, so now that we have our non-lands, let's look at our lands. Actually, I'm gonna, we have a few more mana rocks. We have, again, I mentioned Mana Crypt, zero mana makes two. Soul Ring, one mana makes two. Mana Vault, one mana makes three. Uh, these two have downsides, but not really. Soul Ring is played in every multiplayer EDH deck for a reason. Alright. I mentioned the two Dryad Arbors. Of course, we can get them with Green Sun Zenith. They can be chump blockers. Uh, that's why I'm prioritizing green fetches here. We can get the surprise fetch land into Dryad Arbor for a surprise blocker. Uh, I have one of each basic in Bant. I have a forest, this particular one, because I think it's the most gorgeous forest in Magic. Absolutely. I have this particular island, because it's the most phallic one. I am very mature, as you can see. And... This plains looks like butter, <laughs> and I am still from the south. Even if that's not my cup of tea, I am still from the south, so... Alright, <laughs> next 
we have, I have four Misty Rainforest, three Windswept Heats, and a Flooded Strand. So, seven Green Fetches and a Flooded Strand. Maybe I should go up to eight Green Fetches, again because of the Dryad Arbor trick, and because green is so important in this deck relative to the, to the others. Uh, and the same thing with the fetch lands as with the shock lands you'll see here in just a moment. Three breeding pool, two temple garden, and a hallowed fountain. I'm prioritizing green blue over green white because while there is more white in the deck, there's more double blue. I'm seeing Soon Quan, Vincer, Opposition, two Jace the Mind Sculptor. Whereas for double white, I don't have any actually. I'm looking through again just to make sure, but at least in the main board, I don't have any. So that's why it's done that way. Now, as for the sideboard, really quickly, uh, again, very experimental. I'm starting off with an Archangel Avison, who can come in and not be covered by my finger. There we go. All right, we're good. Who can come in in response to Wrath of God and Damnation to protect my team, because, of course, a lot of decks are going to be bringing those in. And it's also, it has Flash, so I can do this at any point I'd like with Captain Sisei. Next we have Baneslayer Angel for those decks that we uh, can out we can out mid-range, I guess. Baneslayer Angel seems to me to be the best out mid-range creature uh, in essentially any format. Uh, next we have our version of Swiftfoot Boots, I suppose. It's Champion's Helm. Equipped creature gets plus two plus two and if it's legendary it has hexproof. So no it's not Swiftfoot Boots actually. Uh, it doesn't grant haste of any sort, and in that sense it may be worse than Lightning Greaves, but it's one that I'm giving a try, because it goes towards more than just Captain Sisei. For example, putting it on Janara uh, is it's really strong. A Hexproof 5-5 five, five with the potential to get bigger. Flying Angel. Yeah. Uh, we have a single copy of Chromatic Lantern, because it allows us to play against Blood Moon. So even if we get Blood Moon, we'll still be able to do something. Uh, next, I have two copies of Engineered Explosives. Since we're a three-color deck, this is maybe the best removal spell that we can have, allowing us to deal with things like Ensnaring Bridge that might otherwise give us some trouble. Now, <laughs> for our Counterspell package, you'll notice there are no Counterspells in the main board. That doesn't mean we don't have any in the sideboard. We actually have four. We have four copies of Force of Will, which I am strongly considering changing, actually, into Spell Pierce, probably. The problem with Force of Will isn't that it's strong, it's very strong, it's just, let's see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blue cards in the main deck. Force of Will brings us up to 14. That's not a lot. I don't even know if that's quite enough to really run Force of Will. Now granted, we have Captain Sisei, but that's for later on in the game. On turn 1, which is where it really matters, uh, yeah, not so much. We just have to hope that we have another... Uh, one of our 13 other blue cards in the other six cards we have in our hand. Now that said, the reason it's Force of Will is because we are now, now we have discovered some turn one uh, wins in the game, in this format, um, involving Dragonstorm. Or, or, beyond that, uh, if the opponent drops something on turn one that I really need to do something about, like Dark Ritual into Necropotence or Ensnaring Bridge or something that I have a difficult time dealing with, Force of Will will get me there, especially against Necro. <laughs> Dark Ritual Necro, we are taking it back to the 90s. Uh, next, we have a single copy of Memnarch, which helps deal with artifact strategies like stacks, mud, robots, etc. Uh, next we have Teferi, Mage of Zulfir, which helps us deal with counterspell decks. And our opponent's flash creatures. And lastly, against aggro decks, just anything with a lot of creatures, like White Weenie, we can bring in, or Zoo, we can bring in Umizawa's Jite, the other three copies. Once we have that many, it is difficult for our opponent to deal with us. Imagine a, a Death and Taxes deck that happened to have not just something to go tutor it up like Stoneforge Mystic, but also four copies anyway. Imagine how much you would hate playing against that as an infect pilot, merfolk, goblins, elves, etc. Well, that's kind of what we're doing here. We can go and tutor it up with Sisse, or we could just naturally draw into three more copies. Alright, and that's the deck that I have right now. If you have any suggestions for it, feel more than free to let me know. Uh, again, though, a lot of these choices are experimental, and I fully recognize that. Uh, so I'd like to give some of them a try first before we decide whether they're worthy of being taken out or not. Uh, next, I will say one other thing. 
I have an opposition deck, but this isn't an opposition deck. I'll be showing you that one before too long. This is just a deck that happens to have opposition, so for sticking to the end, you get a little bit of a spoiler. <laughs> Alright, a sneak peek. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye!